like to do is show you how to graph um, an absolute value function. So when graphing an absolute value function, there's a couple things we need to know. We have f of x equals um, an a x minus h plus k. All right, there's a couple things we need to remember. First of all, we need to know what the heck actually is an absolute value function. Well, the absolute value function f of x equals absolute value of x is going to look something like this, where this one has a slope of 1 over 1, and this has a slope of negative 1 over 1, and its vertex is at 0, 0. The next thing we need to know is what are our transformations going to do if I had numbers where these variables are. Well, A is going to tell you if it's going to reflect about the x or the y, and also it's going to tell you is it going to be stretching or compressing my graph. My H is going to tell me is it going to shift to the right or shift to the left. Now be careful, it's an it's a x minus h. So if I had, see here it's x plus 2, which could be the same thing as x minus a negative 2. Therefore, my h would equal a negative 2. So in this case, if it's x plus 2, that really means my h is a negative 2, meaning I'm going to shift it to the left 2. Sometimes we just say, just ignore that and just do the opposite. So if it says plus 2, that just tells you to shift it to the left 2, right? It's sometimes a lot easier to remember that. And your k is going to tell you to shift up or to shift down. Um, so, and if obviously it's a positive, you're shifting up. So if I look at this problem, I have an absolute value function. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my transformations to remove my vertex. That's going to give me at least where my new vertex is at and at least what the end behavior is. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick two points, you going back to a table method, to finish the rest of the graph. So all I know here is my graph, it used to be at 0, 0, is now going to be shifted two units to the left. And I also know since this is negative, this whole graph is going to be reflected about the x-axis. So I'm going to have an end behavior that's going to go down and down. But I don't know, is it going to be stretched? Is it going to be compressed? You know, what is it going to look like? Well, I know I'm not going to move my graph up or down at all. So to find some exact points, let's pick a point to the left and let's pick a point to the right of our vertex. So let's say x, y, and let's say negative 1, and let's pick a point negative 1, 2, 3. So now I need to find the values of these two uh, points. So I'll do f of x equals negative, negative 1 plus 2. So negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Absolute value of 1 is 1 times a negative is going to be a negative 1. Then let's do, oh shoot, that's f of negative 1. Absolute value of th negative 3 equals negative, negative 3 plus 2. Well, a negative 3 plus 2 is a negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. 1 times negative 1 is a negative 1. <clears throat> so though these points go down to negative 1. So therefore, that's what my graph is going to look when I have a reflection and a shift, um, a horizontal shift.